so in the last class just i was briefing you about like uh, how exactly data is stored and how exactly data is processed within how exactly data gets stored and data gets processed within. fine so data is subdivided into blocks blocks are distributed across the slaves and processed parallelly right design principles with respect to hdfs blocks as i was just discussing like four cases right one second <clears throat> Okay. So just <clears throat> if I take a file in Hadoop, in Hadoop data is stored in the form of files f one dot txt file. So assume that the size is like one ninety two MB, right? So the file is divided into blocks, number of blocks, into how many blocks? 192, assume that 64 MB, if we take as the default block size, number of blocks equal to file size by default block size. Assume that if you have got like a, <clears throat> three blocks, B1, B2, and B3. B1 block, B2, and B3 block, right? How these blocks are going to get stored across the slaves, right? Single master and multiple slaves. <clears throat> S1, S2, and S3, right? S1, S2, and S3. B1 block here, B2 block here, and B3 block here. B1 is stored here, B2 and B3, right? Okay. So this is that name node or the master node. So it stores the metadata information like the file f.txt, like divided into smaller blocks, right? Into B1, B2, and B3. B1 in S1, B2 in S2, and B3 in S3. B1 in S1, B2 in S2, and B3 in S3, right? Okay. Okay. <clears throat> data processing, data processing, right? Okay, data processing. For example, job is to process like f1.txt in Hadoop, always the job divided into tasks, number of tasks into how many tasks, nothing but number of tasks in Hadoop always depends on number of unique blocks. Number of unique blocks. Why I'm saying the word unique, you will come to know. Uh, how many blocks here? Three blocks. Three blocks means three tasks, right? T1, T2, T3. T1, T2, and T3, right? So here, processing this job f1.txt divided to three tasks, T1, T2, and T3. T1 task is for executing. T1 task is for executing. For executing block B1. So if, if I discuss like, uh, if you have got 192 MB, like uh, 30 lakh records, think that 10 lakh records in this, 10 lakh in this, 10 lakh in this. And uh, means uh, executing executing this uh, B1 10 lakh records is nothing but a task T1. And for executing B2 block, B2 10 lakh records is nothing but like task T2. And uh, this B3 block consisting of 10 ROM records. So who should execute this T1? Yes. Who should execute this T1 task? Which is layer, which system need to execute? Right. Yes. S1, S1. T2 by S2. T3 by S3. So here T1, T2, and T3. 
three tasks are executed by the three slaves parallelly right three tasks are executed by the three slaves parallelly so it has got 10 lakh it has got 10 lakh it has got 10 lakh right suddenly if multiple tasks are executed by multiple slaves parallelly as they are systems right as they are machines if suddenly if any system goes down you see like two things first is like a data loss data loss means b2 block is lost second is t2 task t2 task failed t2 task failed means job failed okay fine So if you observe this chart panel, right, there is a message given by this online team, the Rubasoft online team. So for a future reference, so that payment process see here, uh, if you observe this demo link, all that the course content, the course content you can see in that, the demo videos, uh, the link, the YouTube videos link, the daily, okay. So class videos, soft copy of the material, everything will be providing and uh, if you have, you can just uh, they are providing they are providing some okay one second okay so you can just go through that message okay. <clears throat> Okay. Okay, fine. So once again, I'm saying like it's a hundred hours course, fifty hours on how to fifty hours on. Okay, and it's an offer batch. Okay, one second. Coming to our discussion, right? Okay. Fine. So. Uh, when multiple tasks are executed by multiple slaves, multiple see, multiple tasks are executed by multiple slaves. Okay. Suddenly, if any slave goes down, then uh, two things: data loss means uh, block B two. The ten lakh records are lost. Second thing is the T2 task is going to get failed, right? The T2 task is going to get failed. T2 task failed means job also failed, right? Okay. Okay. So these two things you are going to observe. These two things you are going to observe. So how Hadoop is able to overcome these kind of things, right? Means if a 10 lakh records lost, see, uh, see uh, a file of size 192 MB, divided into blocks three blocks okay <clears throat> so 192 okay three blocks right three blocks b1 b2 b3 yes Yes, Nagaraju, yes. What date is the start regular class? So tomorrow from tomorrow, I'm going to go with so the architecture, Hadoop architecture, right? So from tomorrow it goes. So up to now we have discussed like what is Hadoop and it continues. The batch is going to continue from tomorrow, right? The same thing. <clears throat> okay. 
tomorrow i'll be discussing with the hadoop architectural part <clears throat> so here if you observe how hadoop is able to overcome the, see here a file of size 192 mb divided into three blocks b1 b2 b3 b1 of 10 lakh b2 of 10 lakh b3 of 10 lakh this b1 b2 b3 stored in slave 1 slave 2 and slave 3 and uh, that b1 10 lakh records executing is nothing but p1 task b2 10 lakh is nothing but t2 p3 10 lakh s3 three tasks executed by the three slaves parallelly suddenly if any slave goes down we see like data loss b2 block is lost and t2 task is failed job failed so to overcome this we have got the concept of replication and fault tolerance in other right? replication and fault tolerance replication and fault tolerance replication means duplication replication means what yes replication and fault tolerance replication nothing but duplication so here uh, <clears throat> default number of replicas default number of replications default number of replications in hadoop means three but even we can configure we can increase or decrease this right default number of replications replicas in hadoop is three but even we can increase or decrease this replicas replications or replicas right so I'll just show you like how to increase or decrease. Not only this replications, even the block size. Okay. okay now observe. <clears throat> what is this replication? Whether this replication applied on a file or the file blocks. Just observe. F1.txt file. Size of 192 MB, right? Size of 192 MB. Okay, into how many blocks? Number of blocks equal to 192 by 64. Assume like three blocks. B1, B2, and B3. B1, B2, and B3. B1 replicated by three times. B2 replicated by three times. B3 replicated by three times. Totally nine blocks. Totally nine blocks. Single master and multiple slaves. How these nine blocks going to get distributed across the slaves? Okay, this is my name node, master node. So how these nine blocks, B1 here, slave one slave two and slave three right b1 here b2 here b3 here b1 b3 b2 b3 b1 b2 so this f1 dot txt right divide into how many blocks b1 b2 and b3 b1 stored b1 where b1 is stored as try to answer b1 is stored in slave 1 slave 2 and in slave 3 right b2 also stored in slave 1 slave 2 and slave 3 b3 also in s1 s2 and s3 right so where this b1 b2 b3 all these are stored in s1 s2 s3 s1 s2 s3 right okay now data processing data processing right they how data is getting processing okay data processing means uh, job is to process f1.txt so divided into tasks number of tasks 
number of task equal to number of unique blocks now you will understand why this word unique unique blocks so here how many tasks number of unique blocks unique blocks means how many three blocks or nine blocks unique number of tasks means not nine it's three right unique blocks three blocks remaining six are duplicated box yes three blocks three blocks means number of unique blocks three three blocks means three tasks right three tasks t1 t2 and t3 t1 t2 and t3 right okay job processing like f1 dot txt right so here if you observe T1 task, T2 task, T3 divided into three tasks. Okay. T1 for executing B1, T2 for executing B2, T3 for executing B3. Yes. Now, everyone, <clears throat> now try to observe for executing this T1. Okay. This one, right? Okay. Which slave need to execute this T1 task? Which slave need to execute this T1 task? T1 is for executing B1. All can execute, right? All are eligible for executing this task. S1 can execute it. S2 can execute. S3 can execute. Because B1 block is present in S1, S2, S3. In the yesterday's example, B1 is present in S1 only. So S1 only should execute, right? But here we have got multiple various choice to select. So here, the master node can select any one of the slave. Assume that it has selected S1 only. Assume that the master has selected S1 only to execute the T1 task for executing the block B1. Similarly, who should execute B2 block? <clears throat> S1, S2 and S3, right? S1, S2 and S3. Who should okay so they assume that master has selected for executing t2 task it has selected s2 only it has selected s2 only right okay and for executing t3 task for executing the t3 right s1 s2 and s3 s1 s2 and s3 right for executing this T3 task, for executing this T3 task, right? Assume it has selected S3 only, right? Okay. <clears throat> Fine. So here, T1 task assigned to S1, T2 to S2, T3 to S3, right? Yes. T1, T2, T3. So three tasks are executed by the three slaves parallelly. Here we have taken a small file. That's why uh, less number of tasks. But if you have got a bigger file, more tasks. So here three tasks are executed by the three slaves parallelly. OK. Suddenly, if any slave goes down, is there any data loss here? Previously, B2 block was lost the 10 lakh records if it is sensitive data the data is lost like banking data but here if s2 is f2 slave is down do you think that b2 block at no data loss right here no data loss still that the b2 block is available in s1 and s3 right still the b2 block is available in s1 and s3 so there is no data loss the first thing second thing t2 task t2 task can be assigned to either S1 or S3. <clears throat> T2 task can be assigned to S1 or S3, to any one of them. Need to perform two tasks out of S1 or S3. So the process of executing, see here, multiple tasks, while executing multiple tasks by multiple slaves, Suddenly, if any slave goes down, 
then the task of that slave is assigned to any of the other available slaves this process we call it as fault tolerance mechanism when multiple tasks executed by multiple slaves parallelly if any slave goes down then the task of that slave is assigned to any of the other slave this process we call it as fault tolerance mechanism right okay. so here there is no data loss there is no task failure no job failure right so <clears throat> and here i have got a query here when t1 task can be executed by s1 s2 s3 is there any criteria followed in selecting why the priority is given to s1 only to for executing the t1 task okay what is the criteria followed in assigning the slaves for executing a particular task okay that is one okay now observe so i have got some couple of queries here so s1 executing t1 s2 executing t2 s3 executing t3 right s1 executing t1 s2 executing t2 s3 executing t3 suddenly if this slave is down then the t2 task to be executed by whom right so t2 assigned to either s1 or s3 s1 or s3 so here there is a four steps criteria to be followed four steps criteria first one name node selects so that master node selects the slave which has okay just i'll be writing here so four steps criteria okay first one name node selects the slave which name node selects the slave which has high name node selects the slave which has high hardware configuration if uh, both the slaves are equally configured if both the slaves are if both the slaves are equally configured then then in the second case name node selects the slave which is more ideal which is more ideal which is more free name node selects the slave which is more ideal or more free right if both the slaves are free if both the slaves are free the in that case name node selects
which is nearest to it. Near node select the slave which is nearest to it. In this case also, if uh, both are equally near, assume if both are equally near, right? Then name node selects the slave. which has good health status, which has good health status. Name node selects the slave, which has good health status. Think that if both the slaves has got good health. If both the slaves has got a good health status, then in the extreme case, then it selects it selects any one slave. If both the slaves has got a good health status, then it selects any one slave randomly, right? Name node selects the slave which has good health status. If both the slaves has got a good health status, then it selects any one slave randomly. Okay. So this is what the criteria followed, right? Understood. So default number of replications are three, but even if you want to increase or decrease the number of replications, we can. So what do you mean by fault tolerance mechanism? What do you mean by fault tolerance? If multiple tasks are executed by multiple slaves, If multiple tasks are executed by multiple slaves parallelly, then if any if any one slave goes down, then the task of that task of the slave is allocated Then the task of then the task of the slave is allocated to any of the available slave. This process is called as fault tolerance mechanism. This process is called as like fault tolerance, right? Okay. One second. Good health means here. Uh, a fourth step name node selects the slave with a good health status means even though the slaves have got same hardware configuration right we cannot say that both will have the good health status both slaves now and then any one slave goes down right if which one if both have got if doesn't have any issues with any of the slave if both the slaves have got good health status any one slave okay it selects any one slave randomly if both have got Okay, so this is now configuring block size or replication. What is it? Configuring block size or replication. Configuring block size and replication, right? Okay.
configuring block size and so here by default the block size is like 64 or 128 mb right but even if you want to increase the block size configuring block size and replication. So for this means I want my own block size by default is 64 or 128, but I want to set my own block size like 100 MB or 150 MB or 50 MB, right? And replication also by default it is three. I can increase to four, I can decrease to two, right? So to configure the block size. So to configure the block size, right? <coughs> so go to Hadoop installed folder, go to Hadoop installed folder. Within this Hadoop, there is a folder called etc slash conf. Within that, we have got like a hdfs iphone site dot xml file, right? So within this, open this hd. Open this. XML file and configure the following. Open this XML file and configure the following, right? Okay. Configuration. You're supposed to just write this uh, configuration. property, name, dfs.block.size, right? dfs.block.size, slash name, value what is that block size you want like i want like like 50 mb 50 m i need to say right slash value like see default 64 mb like 100 mb i want 100 m i'm saying 100 m slash value right so configuration property name and value what is the name dfs block size how much size? 100 M, right? Okay. Slash property. Property, right? Okay, just observe. I'm sorry, value slash value, it's a value slash value. <coughs> okay, similarly, I want to configure this replication name. DFS dot replication slash name, right? And value value right okay <coughs> replication what is that replication like that fine four times or three times by default three times right i am giving four here slash value if it is very sensitive data go with more number of replications otherwise just go with two or three right
slash property. So these are the two properties. First property is block size. We can keep our default boxes and the proper one more like replication. Like what is it? Right. Slash configuration. So this is that this is that we need to write within that XML file HDFS hyphen side dot XML where it is present in conf folder. It is present within the conf folder, right? Within this Hadoop etc conf folder HDFS hyphen side dot XML, right? And design principles with respect to replication. Next, design principles with respect to replication. Design principles with respect to a replication. Replication is applicable. Replication is applicable only for the data, only for the data, but not for the metadata. But not for the metadata, right? Replication. Replication is applied only within the data nodes. Okay, I'll come to that query, right? Okay. So, okay, I'll just come back to your query, right? Replication. Max number of replications. Max number of replications equal to number of max number of replications equal to number of slaves. All the same, all the replications cannot be. All the same replications cannot be within the same. All the same replications cannot be within the same slip. Observe. Observe this diagram once, right? Observe here. Now observe in this case, this is the master. These are the slaves. S1, S2, S3. <clears throat> uh, 
Okay. Yeah, see, generally, number of replications, for example, for example, I'm not, I'm just saying, like, for example, if you have got a cluster capacity of 40 slaves, right? So, maximum 40 you can have. If you have got of 20, right? 20. If you have got of 100 slaves, right? What is your cluster capacity? 100 means 100 replications you can have. 50 means 50. If you have got whatever your cluster capacity, how many slaves you have got, those many you can go, right? in a generalized manner. <clears throat> if you have got a, a 40 slaves, you can go with 40. <clears throat> okay, now here B1, 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 B2, 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 B3, B3, B3. Means to understand this, to understand this last one, all the same duplications cannot be within the same slave means. If suddenly if this is slave to if s2 is down right if slave 2 is down okay if slave 2 is down then the entire b2 block is lost right it is not present in s1 so all the same blocks cannot be stored within the same slave so they should be distributed across the slaves right fine Okay. Okay. For example, I'm writing a note here. whenever we configure whenever we configure blocks as a replication for the changes to be applied whenever we configure blocks as for the changes to be applied we need to restart we need to restart the cluster whenever we configure blocks as a replication for the changes to be applied we need to restart the cluster Because because the configuration file is read, because the configuration file is read only once. because the configuration file is read only once that is
that is during the restart of the cluster is read only once when the cluster starts okay Okay. For example, for example, okay. Observe this. In January two thousand twenty one, a file f one dot txt. Default block size. Default block size taken is. Observe. Default block size taken is. Sixty-four MB. In January, in February two thousand twenty-one. F two dot txt. Default block size. Assume the default block size taken is. Sixty-four MB. In March two thousand twenty-one, right? You got a file f three dot txt. Default block size. Default block size. One twenty-eight MB. So, in the March two thousand twenty-one, if I want to execute, if I want to execute f one dot txt. In March two thousand twenty-one, if I want to execute f one dot txt. What is the block size it takes? What is the block size it takes? Sixty four or one twenty eight. What is the block size it is going to take? Everyone, try to answer. What is the block size it takes? It takes sixty four MB only, because in January only it is divided into blocks and stored across the slaves. Again in March it is not going to get divided again, storing across the slaves. So all the old files with the old block size, all the new new files with. New block size, right? Okay. All the old files with old block size, new files, with new block size. Okay. Again, they are not going to be divided again, stored across this. Again, they are not going to be stored across these slaves. Okay. So in the tomorrow session, just I'll be talking. I'll be discussing about the architecture, Hadoop architectural components, storage architectural component, and processing architectural components. Fine. Yes. So as some of you were asking, right? Yeah, you'll be getting the video on a daily basis. But as of now, there you will be getting that. I'll, you can see that YouTube links are given as of now. But later, once okay. But later now, after two or three days, you'll be getting that. To your Google Drives, all that videos not won't be posted in the YouTube. Only the first four or five, you'll be getting to your Google Drives, right? Okay. And uh, <clears throat> okay, last like we have got four sessions, right? We have taken like Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. So tomorrow the link will be changed, right? The link is going to be changed. So those who are registered, you'll be getting that link. Means by paying the fees. Okay, fine. <clears throat> so here, uh, some of you are asking that notes, right? Clear notes. For example, if we talk about uh, Spark, right? For example, Spark. So, so this is this is the notes that I'm going to forward in a notepad format in a clear. Okay. For example.
step by step process okay step one see here if you observe in the step one what we are performing with comments okay step two step three okay so these are that means for every batch i'll be creating the new documents right everything i'll be typing and showing you fine so everything is practical everything i'll be showing you practically don't worry about the software right <clears throat> fine clear notes i'll be providing you from topic to topic fine hope you understood that what we have discussed till now right okay. so <clears throat> So tomorrow you can okay we'll be seeing the architecture of Hadoop Hadoop storage architecture and processing architecture right so next I'll also be the latest architecture we'll be discussing right Yarn architecture so fine any other queries fine Monday to Friday. So your classes Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Okay, Monday to Friday you'll be having classes, right? Sometimes on Saturdays I'll be taking, I'll be pre-intimating you, right? Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Okay, fine. Yeah, come definitely, right? WhatsApp group will be compulsory be there, right? For those people who got enrolled, you'll be having a WhatsApp group. For interactions compulsory fine <clears throat> don't worry okay just if some of you people were asking right it's clear notes and everything i'll be dealing with uh, okay one second for example notes uh, for example clear notes i'll be generating during the sessions only that i'll be forwarding you for example scoop we talk about the sql plus hadoop right so clearly what is scoop scoop import scoop export uh, how we are going to perform right one second first is uh, like scoop to like importing table without primary key and here uh, filtering rows while importing data filtering columns while importing importing selected columns and filtering generating new fields how we can import the different types of import and export and uh, filtering rows using iphone iphone query generating new fields at the time of importing merging tables at the time of importing importing data from two different tables during merging if tables have different schema, if table have, okay, groupings and aggregations during import and export operations can be perform groupings and aggregations, working with the delimiters, different types of delimiters, working with some kinds of joints during import or export operations and uh, importing data into existing, okay. So in this way, everything in a clear format, okay, from RDBMS to Hive, Scoop Export, okay, fine. Yes, scoop all this high of flume edge base to talk about how it's an important component right see we have got a lot of high introduction high collections high part one high part two so two parts have divided into high we will be discussing a lot of discussion on high which is an important component nearly we'll be getting 20 documents for it for high okay in brief okay uh so okay so hope you understood right so tomorrow the link will be changed so those who got registered you'll be getting that link and we'll be discussing with hadoop architectural step by step right okay i'm stopping here for today meet you tomorrow same time five o'clock tomorrow at five o'clock right okay <clears throat> thank you right